Hey guys, my name's Dave. This is Custom Spray Mods, and in this video, I'm going to test clear coat thickness. Yeah, so I've got this panel, it's been painted and clear coated. I'm going to test the thickness of the panel. I'm going to go around the whole thing, uh, get some averages, get the thickness of the clear, and then I'm going to use a few different products and see how much clear is being removed when those products are being used. So I'm going to put swells in the clear, I'm going to um, sand it with some 1500 grit sandpaper, some 2000 grit sandpaper, I'm going to sand it with some 3000 grit sandpaper, I'm also going to use a coarse pad, coarse compound on a dual action polisher, I'm going to use a coarse pad and a coarse compound on a rotary machine, I'm also going to apply some ceramic coating, then I'm going to test the thickness again, and then I'm going to see how much clear has been removed, or how much product has been added, and hopefully with the paint thickness gauge, it can give us a bit of an indication of how much paint, how much clear is being removed from the panel, and that can help when you're detailing. So yeah, I'm gonna do that now. So I've got this panel with a couple of coats of clear on it, and I'm going to mask up nine different sections. So I have small little squares that I can measure the paint thickness. Now that I've got the panel all masked up, I'm going to place some markings where the tape was so I know where I've got these squares. Now I'm going to measure the paint thickness. This machine measures the paint thickness down to the metal. So I'm going to take five readings, then I will get an average of those readings and it should give me a bit of an indication of how much product is on the panel. So I've taken five readings in each of these little squares and then I made an Excel spreadsheet and basically got the average. So I've got a bit of an indication of the clear coat thickness. I'm going to start by using some old 3000 grit and a sponge and just uh, using it to create swells in the clear just to imitate swell marks on a painted clear coated surface. Now I'm going to use some sanding discs and basically just sand the clear coat. I'm going to start with 1500 grit, then I'm going to use 2000 grit, then 3000 grit sanding discs, and basically sand the clear. Now that I've got the panel all scratched up, I've also got it sanded with the three different grits. I'm going to mask it up again, and then I'm going to use the depth meter and basically read the clear coat again and see what results I get. Now I'm going to use some coarse compound and a microfiber cutting pad on this 21mm dual action polisher and I'm going to hold it in one spot for exactly one minute. Then I'll take the reading again. On the next part I'm going to use a rotary with a coarse pad and a coarse cutting compound. Again I'm going to hold it in one spot for one minute. Then I'll take the reading again on that part. Finally, on the last part of the panel, I'm going to apply some ceramic coating. I'm using our most popular coating, which is the CarPro C Quartz. I'm going to apply one coat, then after about 40 minutes, I'm going to apply, apply another coat. Then I'll take the reading in that part.
Now before we look at the results, I would like to just do another test. I'm going to use the 1500 grit sandpaper on this black hood and I'm going to basically just sand the clear. Once I've done that, I'm going to use the two different machines and different pads and compound combination to correct the clear. Firstly, I'm going to use a coarse compound and a microfiber cutting pad. And this is a Rupes Bigfoot, it's a 21 mil. And um, yeah, so this is one of the best machines out there. I'm going to use the pad and compound combination for exactly two minutes on this part of the panel and we'll see what the results are. Now I'm going to use a rotary machine with a coarse pad and a coarse compound. I'm going to do the exact same thing, work on the panel for exactly two minutes and we'll see what the results look like. So here we have the finish from the dual action machine and on this side we have the finish from the rotary. Now this is just one step, I could go another couple of steps and get this looking even better but for a two minute run on the two different machines there's quite a big difference. So on this panel I use the depth meter and I read various parts of the panel and these are my results. So I split it into nine different parts and basically recorded an average of the different readings that I had. So I took five readings, record the average and here they are. Then I did a few different things to the panel. So after putting swirls in the paint, I measured the paint thickness again and I had a few different results. On the first part, it was less clear by 2.8 micron in the middle part, there was actually more clear by 1.2 micron. And in the third part, it was less clear by 2.4 micron. So that's just after swelling it up with some used 3000 grit sandpaper to imitate swell marks. Next, I used the sandpaper on the DA machine. And in the first part, I got a difference of 9.46 micron. In the second part with the 2000 grit sandpaper, there was less 2.4 micron. And in the third part where the 3000 grit sandpaper was used, it was less 1.2 micron. So yeah, those results kind of make sense. And finally, I used the DA machine with a microfiber pad, coarse pad and coarse compound. And I had a difference of 1.38 micron, less clear. Then I used the rotary, which was a coarse pad and a coarse compound. And I actually measured more clear by 1.52 micron. Uh, and then finally, I applied some ceramic coating. I applied two coats and I had a difference of 0.67 micron, which read a little bit less than what it read before. I also measured a piece of tape and that equaled about 100 micron. So if you're thinking about what 100 micron of product looks like, it's about the thickness of masking tape. I've also measured several layers of clear coat and I've come to the conclusion that one layer of clear coat is about 25 to 20 micron. So if you were to measure inside your door jams and you got uh, 50 micron for example and then measured 125 micron on the exterior of the car, then you could conclude that you've got approximately three coats of clear on your car and that 75 micron of that 150 is clear coat. Okay, so I've done the test. I measured the clear before I went at it with these different products. I measured the clear after, and I got a few different results. Obviously, the 1500 grit, uh, it took off about uh, nine micron of clear. The 3000 grit and the 2000 grit, about 1.5 to 2.5 micron. Um, now, the, uh, the dual action polisher with a coarse pad, coarse compound, really didn't take much off at all. 
and the rotary, when I used it for a minute with a course comment and a course pad, it actually, it measured more than before. I mean, I've only got a little tiny square here, so it's kind of hard to get the exact reading every time, but it didn't take much clear off at all, if, if any. So my theory is that the rotary just heats up the clear and kind of melts it back together rather than cutting it or removing it. It's just a theory, might not be right, but I measured it before and after and there was really not much difference between the clear thickness. So yeah, I don't know what to make of that. Um, just that using a rotary, it's not going to burn your paint off if it's used correctly. If you use the rotary on an angle or a curved surface, it can rip that paint off pretty quickly because all the energy from the motor is going into this pad. Um, so yeah, something to be careful on curved surfaces, but on flat areas, the rotary is the best. Gets the job done really quick and gets a really nice finish if it's used correctly. So yeah, um, the dual action is great for removing swells, uh, fine haze, things like that. Uh, it's easier, it's got like a, a lot less chance of burning through with the dual action, which is why it's so popular. But um, as far as if you're correcting sandpaper marks or heavy swells, the rotary is gonna be heaps quicker. So yeah. Well, I hope that video helped you maybe, uh, you know, uh, clear up a few misconceptions about the different machines. Uh, definitely, if you are taking on some detailing work, uh, if you're planning on getting serious about it, I would definitely get a rotary machine because it can make your job a lot quicker. And you never know, you might come across some really heavy scratches and you might need to do some sanding in the future. So rotary is great. Um, dual action machine, definitely you can get really cheap ones that will uh, do the job. You'll be able to correct the paint on a whole car and, um, and you know, apply ceramic coating or any kind of coating. And that'll work really good too. Um, so yeah, that's the difference between the two machines. And uh, yeah, the clear coat is a lot stronger than you think. So hope that helps you next time you're doing some detailing. So thanks again for watching. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And um, trying to make more videos for you guys and trying to clear up some myths, misconceptions about spray painting and clear coat. So hopefully uh, we get some more videos soon. So thanks a lot, see you next time.